Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bolt Gun. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint Squat Bouncy Hunter Grendel Grendelson from Necromunda. So the first colour that we're going to use is the Fist on Red. Now we're not going to be painting Grendel Grendelson in his standard colours that he is on the Forge World site and on the packaging. I'm actually going to be painting this guy in the original Space Dwarves kind of colours that you got on the old Space Dwarves mercenaries of the 41st Millennium box. It was one of the boxes where I had a picture on the cover, kind of like the Crimson Fist cover on the old Road Trader. It was just a big pile of squats, all shooting out from the hill that they're on. And so he's based on the colours of one of those. So it's going to be like the red jacket, the yellow trim, the yellow helmet and the yellow armour pads. So you can see here, we've finished the Mephist on red on his coat. Nice even layer on that. Next we're going to be using Vallejo Olive Drab. Or US olive drab, and this is just to do is clothing underneath and his knee and elbow pads and the little bit of armour that is peeking out from beneath his coat or his flak jacket, as it would have been. So, just going to carry on with this. And when we return, we shall have all the US Olive Drab finished. Now it's time for his armour plates and his helmet, and they are going to be painted with Citadel Abelan Sunset. Now the colours are quite garish with the red, the green and the yellow, but it's a really cool look, and once finished, you will look really, really great. Couldn't resist doing them this colour because I always used to like the squats. Never had an army of them, only ever had a couple of the miniatures. But when he released Grendel Grendelson, is one of the ones that I had to get. Also going to get the um, ammo loader, so you'll probably see another squat video in the future. Now we're going to use Vallejo Beige Brown, one of the Flames of War colours. We're going to use this to do his pouches and the leather strap which he's got going over his shoulders. I'll just give this a nice smooth coat. It's a really great miniature. This. There's some superb details, even down to the dwarven badges on the, his backpack. I think he's got one on the side of his bolt gun as well. There's some superb details. Next we're going to use Vallejo Flesh Base, one of the Panzer Ace colours. This is going to be to do his lip and his nose and his cheeks, which are showing through underneath his visor. Now he's well covered up, so you've only got really this section of flesh to do. You want to make sure you get all of that covered with a nice even coat of flesh base, or whichever flesh colour that you're going to use. Now we're going to be using Mechanicus Standard Grey from Citadel. And this is going to be to do his beard. That does cover quite a big area on the model. So as a base colour, you can't really go wrong with this. Now going back to the detailing, I love that he's got the old flak jacket with the almost rhombic-shaped quilting on it. And the helmet is just the same shape as all the old style ones. So really, really pleased with this miniature. Hopefully we'll do him justice. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Retributor armour. This is just to do a few small gold areas. So you've got his belt buckle, the little badge on the back, the skulls on his shoulder. Now when you are painting your miniatures, if you are following any of these guides, um, just use whichever is the most similar colour that you've got. A lot of the time I'm just picking out the colours which I think will look good on it rather than any specific ones for any specific reason. This all stems back to not having a whole lot of paint on as a kid. And so we just paint with whatever we had. Using that, that's usually why I mix white with the colours when I'm highlighting. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. I'm going to use this on all the metallic sections, so the parts of his hammer and his bolt gun. You've also got parts on his backpack and the lamp, or the target device, whatever it is, that's poking up from his shoulder.
just finish all this and come back with the next colour. Now we're going to be using a little bit of fulgurite copper. This is only going to be to a few small details on his hammer. Then you just want to make sure you've got a nice smooth layer of this so it's not streaky. So you need to go back and give it a second coat to do so. Now we're going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Rakarth flesh and this is just to do the three scrolls on his shoulder pad or three almost like purity seals but with a little gold skull and crossbones on the top. And also there's one on his bolt gun on the right hand side of his bolt gun. Again, you may have to do a second layer of this. I always find Ricard's flesh a little bit too thin, but if you do need to give it a second go, then do so. I'm going to use Wasdaka Red from Citadel. I'm just going to use this to do the handle where you've got the checkered pattern. And this is just to make sure that it's a different colour to the Mephiston Red that we used previously. This gives a slightly lighter red colour. I'm going to use a different shade as well just to separate them up to make them look a lot more different. Like so. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel on the Fist on Red, and I'm just going to use a tiny spot of this. That's going to be to do the lens on the targeter or the lamp which is on his shoulder, whichever it is. Now we're going to start using the shades. We're going to start with Citadel Drucci Violet. Now you're just going to use this on his flak jacket. So you want to make sure you get all the edges to the red, the undersides. Not a little bits of his flat jacket which is showing through, including his collar and the back of his collar. When I was painting initially, I didn't realise there was some quilting on the back of his collar as well, so make sure you get that when you're doing the initial layers. Like so. Next shade that we're going to use is Citadel Carrowberg Crimson. And this is just to do the handle of his hammer. As I said earlier, it's just to make it that little bit of a different red colour to his flak jacket. So they don't blend in together. Next up is Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We're going to use this to go over all the yellows and also the little parchments on his seals. The reason I'm using yellow rather than the fugan orange that I usually use, like on the Lamenters, is because the underhive is a pretty grim and gritty place, and I wanted to make it look like he's a bit dirty and a bit worn, so that even if he's cleaning his armour, there's still going to be that grime in between all the joints. It also makes his gloves look a bit dirty and used. Next, a little bit of right long flesh shade from Citadel. This is just to do his face. So it's a very quick layer of this. Like so. Now the next colour we're using is Citadel Athonian Camo Shade. You can use this to do the actual clothing, his kind of boiler suit or his jumpsuit underneath. Also the grenades and the backpack, but not the knee pads or the elbow pads. We're going to use a different shade for that. So you just want to be doing the cloth, the grenades and the backpack with this, and a little armour plate at the front there. When we come to do the pads on his knees and his elbows, we use a different colour next. And that'll just make those stand out as being slightly different, or a slightly different material. The next green shade we're using is Citadel BL Tan Green. 
This is a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter. So we're going to do the elbow and knee pads with this, just to make them stand out that little bit. Like so. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Non Oil. It's just going to be to all the silver metallics. Now you'll notice as the model goes on that I'm actually working on the base as well. I don't really show the base um, when I'm painting miniatures. But I'm basically using exactly the same techniques that I'm using on the fellow. So when you see the yellow and black stripes on the base that I'm putting on later, it's exactly the same method as I use on his hammer. And the silver and the gold colours are exactly the same things that I use on the Retributor armour and also on the chrome. Now going on to Citadel Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to be using this for the gold, the copper and the pouches. You can also use this to grime up the base when you're doing that. If you'd like to see a video on doing the bases so that you can get the stripes on there, make them look quite specific to Necromunda, then I can add one of them on. I was thinking of doing one of them just as a bit of a, a change up from doing the miniatures. I've done a video on the Sector Mechanicus bases earlier on when I was doing my Death Guard, but they're without the stripes, just a bit corroded. Now I'm going to work on the black. I'm going to be doing this for his sunglasses, his bulk gun casing, and also his boots. So when I start painting the stripes on the hammer in a moment, you'll notice there's four bolts underneath the hammer on the face of it. I'm drawing a line from one bolt straight to a line above another bolt, and adding that in, filling it in. And then I do that from each bolt, and that gives you an almost equal set of stripes going all the way around, which you'll see on the next part of the video. That's just using those little bolts on the face of the hammer as markers. So now we're returning to Citadel Avaland Sunset. I'm going to start painting the helmet, gloves, shoulder pads, and a little bit more yellow to the hammer again. Now we're going to be using a little tiny piece of sponge and a little bit of Avalon Sunset. I'm just going to sponge that onto the hammer to give that look that the black has been chipped away as you've been using it. And the yellow is showing through underneath. And we're going to add a little bit of chrome with that towards the end. Just to give that a bit of a shine as though to chip through the yellow as well. So it's a nice easy way to do a bit of battle damage on there. If you've not put them together, it might be worth doing this because it's a pain to get the sponge on the inside there. But it is possible if you just use the corner of a very small bit of sponge. Now to differentiate between the gloves and the armour, we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to the Avalon Sunset. I'm going to start a little bit of highlighting on the gloves. This is ever so slightly washed out by the lamp, but you can see that. Again, we're using a little bit of white mixed with the Avalon Sunset here. And that's just to give it a difference in colour to the armour plates themselves. Like so. Now I'm going to use Citadel Uriel Yellow. We're going to use this on the helmet and shoulder pads. And also on the little armour discs that are on his ankles. You're trying to get this where it will be catching the light. So looking down from above, you want this yellow to be on most of the shoulder and head armour that will be catching the light. Maybe the top half of those pads on his ankles as well. 
I'll just add a little bit of white to the Citadel Uriel Yellow and do a highlight on it. Again, we're trying to get this highlight on the areas that will be catching the light. And when we come back, we'll have this layer finished. Now we're going to return to the Mephiston Red and start working on his flak armour again. Now you can see just from doing those couple of layers on the helmet and on the gloves that they do look like two very different yellows. It's a very simple technique to use the same kind of colours but make them look a little bit different so it's not all matching. When we come back, we'll have this base layer of his flak armour done. Now we're going to add a little bit of Citadel Fire Dragon Bright to the fist on red. I'm going to start on the first layer of highlights on his flak jacket. Now you want to be trying to get the upper edges of all the pads on the quilting. Aim for all the areas where the light would be catching it. So on the underside there, you're not really going to be highlighting too much, just the very extreme edges of it. So you can see we've highlighted all that. Just the areas that will be catching the light. And so we're going to mix a further bit of Citadel Fire Dragon Bright to the previous mix. And we're going to highlight the quilting now. Now this is more of an extreme highlight so it's not going to be covering huge areas of it, just the very tips and the areas that you really want to stand out. So when you're adding this highlight you just want to be highlighting the areas that you've previously done but leaving some of the previous layers showing through around its edges just so you get that red to the first mix then to this mix. Now we're going to return to Vallejo US Olive Drab. We're going to be doing this on his backpack and his clothing. So I kind of imagine this is like a little boiler suit underneath his flak armour. It probably isn't, but that's how I think of it. So we're going to do this in the Olive Drab, highlighting all the raised areas. The same for the little armour piece on the front of his flak jacket there. We're also going to work on the knee pads with the olive drab, because we've got the different shade in there, it will make them a little bit different, but we're going to work on the knee pads at the same time as we're doing the cloth. So you can see the first layer of US olive drab there. And now what we've done is we've added a little bit of Vallejo white to the olive drab, and we're just going to highlight the cloth, and his backpack as well. I'm not going to do too many highlights on the backpack, we're just going to do this one so that it looks different to the clothing once it's finished. I was just going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black. I'm going to do a little smiley face on this ankle pad. I'm going to do a little upset face on the ankle pad on the other side. Like so. Now we're going to move on to Vallejo German Grey. We're going to highlight his boots and also the bolt gun. Also just do a little highlight on the sunglasses going across the top there.
So with this highlight I'm aiming to do the top edges and areas of the bolter. So the vertical sections down from where the barrel is. And the top edges where I expect it to be catching the light more than anywhere else. The same with his boots, I'm going to be highlighting them. So that the areas that would be catching more light would be getting more of the German grey. Now we're going to use Citadel Mechanica's standard grey to highlight that. Now we're mainly going to be doing the edges of the bolter and the boots. We're also going to re-highlight his beard. Or recolor his beard, I should say. I'm going to return this to Mechanica's standard grey. And then we can start working on some highlights on the beard as well. like so. So you can see the grey there, it's been used. Now we're going to move on to a little bit of Vallejo London grey, which is a lighter colour than the Mechanica standard grey. And we're just going to highlight the beard. A little bit of jump in the video there because the camera cut out, ran out of space when I was filming, so I had to go on and restart this little bit again. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo Beige Brown. It's one of the Flames of War colours and it's what we used on the pouches earlier. So we're now going to roughly recolour these in, leaving plenty of the Agrax Earth shade in the recesses and around the sides. See him mainly highlighting the bits that would be catching the light or would have been worn. So the edges and the corners and the straps, any areas that would have been maybe frayed or chafed a little bit. Also really working on the brown part of his boots as well. We'll try and give you a little look, see what they are once we've finished. So we're now going to add a little bit of Vallejo white to the beige brown. I'm just going to do one little highlight, or a first highlight, on these. Mainly doing the edges and the corners, where they'd be a bit frayed, a bit scraped and chafed. And the edges where they'd be catching against things all the time. I'm also going to be using this for the little armour pad which goes across his stomach there and also the straps which you have between his armour. You can see the boots there so we're just going to highlight them the same as we are doing here. I'm just going to use some Vallejo Pure White. This is just going to be to do some highlights on his beard. There's loads of detail on his moustache there as well. I managed to cock it up slightly when I was doing it and I had to reapply a tiny little bit of black just to go between the two fibres which have just blocked up there. There's a lot of detail on this figure. Now we're going to use some Citadel Ricard Flesh. I'm going to use this to redo the scrolling which is on his shoulder and the one on his bolt gun as well. Get a fairly even layer of this, but making sure you leave the sepia in the recesses. Now we've added a little bit of white to the Citadel Ricard flesh, and we're just going to highlight these bits of parchment. Like so. And finally we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black. Just put some little lines going across them, so there's text written on the parchment. I'm just going to try and do a little shape at the bottom, so there's some sort of seal or symbol there. I'm 
like so. I'm going to use a little bit of serif from Sepia from Citadel. I'm going to use this just to start darkening up all the metallics on it. If you look at the Forge World pictures of Grendel, the silvery metallics go from silver at the bottom to very dark brownish kind of colour, which looks a bit over the top in terms of grime and stuff, but I am adding the sepia and then we'll follow up with some Grax Earth Shade just to darken and dirty the metallics on it. The underhive's a filthy place, so probably best dirtying them up a little. Now we're going to use some Citadel and Grax Earth Shade. Going to be using that just to darken up the areas that we've just made look grimy. Basically, when you're doing this to the bulk gun, what you want to be doing is painting this on the areas that wouldn't be getting much friction against them, so there's not going to be a hand grabbing them or it getting brushed against the wall or anything like that. So where you've got the casing going over the metals, those areas are going to be the darkest, which is why there's more grime there. So we're going to start working on is lamp or targeter. Because we've already painted that Mephist on red earlier, we're going to do a little bit of white into that Mephist on red. I'm going to colour in a crescent which covers about half of the lens, like so. Now I'm going to add a little bit more white to that mix and do another slightly smaller crescent. And again, we're going to add a little bit more white again. Do a slightly smaller crescent once more. And then finally, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Pure White. We're just going to do a little spot in the top right-hand corner of the lens and a tiny little line in the bottom left-hand corner. This will give the look of a reflection. Next up, we're going to be using Vallejo White. We'll just do a few little highlights on the lenses of his glasses. Like so. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel gloss varnish, the hard coat, and we're just going to do that over his glasses and the lens of the targeter or the lamp. Like so. So for the metallics, we're just going to do a little bit of work with Vallejo Model Air Chrome. I'm going to use this to do the buttons on all of the pouches, a few little edges and sort of maybe nicks and lines going across his boots, or the metallic parts on it, as though they've been scraped or scratched. Like so. Now we're going to return to Vallejo Flesh Base. I'm just going to reapply this to his skin and his face. Now there's not too much, so just a little bit on his lip, his cheeks, and his nose. I'm using quite a thin brush here, it's the Army Painter Wargamer Character Brush because it is a very narrow gap to get to his face there. I'm going to keep trying to get this cheek because it's a bit awkward. Now we're going to come back, we're going to add a little bit of a layer of white to the flesh base. I'm just going to do a highlight on his skin. Like so. Now I'm going to use a little bit of the Citadel Dry Paint Necron Compound. I'm going to lightly dry brush this around all the edges 
on the base so all of the ridges on the yellow and on the bits where we put lead belcher just to add a little bit of a chafed look to it i was going to lightly dry brush this onto this hammer and all the metallic parts of that around the edges of the hammer head to make them look worn as well the paint's chipped off or worn away also all these metallic areas on his backpack and on his bolt gun too and one final detail that i'm adding here is a little white square on one side of his helmet if you look at the old warhammer 40k space dwarves box mercenaries in the 41st millennium a lot of them have this little white patch with a rune on it so that's what we're going to do here we've got the little white square on the side of his helmet and on the next part i'm going to be painting on the little rune using citadel and a fist on red Now it's very rare that I'll water down any paints or thin the paint. Sorry for the noise there, that's the cat shaking her head while she's sitting on my lap. But in this instance, I did add a little tiny spot of water to the paint just to thin it because I'm using a really, really small amount and it's quite warm in the loft at the moment, even though it's freezing cold outside. It means the paint was drying on the brush a little bit too quickly so I couldn't get it on. So you can see me sort of wiping nothing onto the white patch there or very thin lines. By adding a little tiny bit of water you can see it has smoothed it and allows the paint to go on a lot better just add the two diagonal lines coming from the vertical and that is our rune like so and that is grendel grendelson finished all you now is a bit of time to play some games with them Thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content also think about subscribing to some of our other social media link below thanks very much